And I would like to continue my study series about making adversity pay, turning your adversity to great opportunities. Welcome, and I would like to tackle the fourth and the last opportunity that we can gain from, uh, from, from adversity. Of course, these are not limited to four, but as far as this study series is concerned, we have limited it to four items. So taking hold of the opportunity to be grateful. This is opportunity number four. And let me start with a story about Rudyard Kipling, the renowned author of Jungle Book and the $100 Bill story. Rudyard Kipling was a great British poet whose writings have blessed many of us, including a generation gone by. Rudyard Kipling was a very famous writer even before he died and made a great deal of money at his trade. A newspaper reporter came up to him once and said, Mr. Kipling, I just read that somebody calculated that the money you make from your writings amounts to over $100 a word. Mr. Kipling raised his eyebrows and said, Really? I certainly wasn't aware of that. The reporter cynically reached into his pocket and pulled out a $100 bill and gave it to Kipling and said, Here's a $100 bill, Mr. Kipling. Now, you give me one of your $100 words. Rudyard Kipling looked at the $100 bill for a moment, took it, folded it, and put it in his pocket and said, Thanks. Well, the word thanks is certainly a $100 word. In fact, I would say it is more than like a, it is more like a million dollar word. That is one word that is too seldom heard, too rarely spoken, and too often forgotten. And we have to understand that being grateful and being thankful in life is the one thing that we can get as an opportunity in facing adversity and challenges in, in, li in life. Now, I was reminded by a quote made by Melody BT, an American author, and, he, and she said, Gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. That's how powerful gratitude is. And so I would like to present to you one opportunity that we can get from uh, from the challenges that we are facing. And I would like to give you Colossians 3, 16 to 17. And it says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. In verse 17, it says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it, all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it, in, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here, Apostle Paul was actually challenging us to manifest the glory of God, the power of God, even in the midst of adversity by being thankful, by, by being grateful in every circumstance that we are in. Now, let me define to you what gratitude is and how is it being manifested in our lives. Gratitude is a byproduct of a way of seeing things, of a certain worldview, and it, re it reveals your disposition in life. Gratitude will show whether we are grateful to God. Gratitude will show whether we are contented in life. Gratitude will, sh will show whether we are actually tight and um and it's not really clear whether or not we are gaining something from our adversity. And in our study today, let me give you four transformative principles in being grateful amid adversity. Number one is that being grateful happens in the presence of God. More gratitude will not come from more acquisitions, but from more awareness of God's presence and God's goodness. When we are in the presence of God, we learn how to be grateful. When we are in the presence of God, we know the things that we cannot do, or we, even, if, even if we try to do it, we cannot really do it at all. And so we, we just have to entrust 
everything to the Lord. Now, let me give you factors that constitute gratitude. How do we have gratitude? Number one is benefit. In order for us to be grateful, we have to receive a gift. We have to have the attitude of embracing adversity with grace and hope that it is a gift where there will be growth, progress, and blessings. So I would like to ask you, do you take this adversity as a gift? Do you embrace this adversity as a gift? If you're taking this adversity as a gift, then you will definitely have a benefit. Second is benefactor. We must believe that benefits are coming your way from somebody who means well. If it is a gift and that and, and, and if and if God is the one who is giving that gift, adversity will not destroy you, adversity will not trample you, but adversity will build you up to the point that eventually you can declare that this adversity must pay. Thirdly, is beneficiary. We must believe we are receiving something we did not earn, we did not merit, or we did not deserve. If it is a gift from God and it is the one He's giving us and is giving it giving the gift to us with reasons and purposes, then we can be assured, we can be confident that at the end of every challenge, that at the end of every adversity, we will be at the winning point. So benefit benefactor and ben beneficiary will constitute a life of gratitude let me give you the second point the second transformative principle in being grateful amidst adversity being grateful happens in the humility of heart the sinful human race is naturally entitled as a matter of fact i once heard that ungrateful is not the opposite of grateful but being entitled we believe our gifts rightfully belong to us. That is entitlement. The more we think we're entitled, we're, we're entitled to, the less we will be grateful for. So entitlement is the greatest enemy of being grateful. Because the bigger our sense of entitlement, the smaller our sense of gratitude. Now let me explain. The sad truth is that most of us aren't grateful people. When it comes to having a spirit of thanksgiving, we fall short, don't we? We are much better at grumbling and complaining than we are at giving thanks. Despite all the blessings, sometimes we're anything but thankful. We're often like the nine lepers in Luke 17. There we read of ten lepers who stood at a distance and cried out to Jesus as he was traveling along the border of Samaria and Galilee. The deceased-ridden lepers cried out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And Jesus heard the lepers and said to them promptly, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And Luke 17, 14 to 16 says, And as the lepers went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back. Praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And in verses 17 and 18, Jesus says to this one leper who returned, We're not all ten, ten cleansed? He said, Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Jesus' emotional response to the ingratitude of the nine lepers gives us a glimpse into the heart of God. Jesus was disappointed that only one person cared enough to express his gratitude. William Barclay writes, No story in all the Gospels so poignantly shows man's ingratitude like the lepers in Luke 17. The lepers came to Jesus with desperate longing. He cured them and nine never came back to give thanks. William Barclay, ba Barclay says, So often, once a man has got what he wants, he never comes back. Doesn't that look like us? We take God's goodness for granted, we receive a great blessing, yet often we don't give God our gratitude. Psalm 103 verse 2 reads, Blessed be the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his blessings. 
But in most cases, we forget the blessings of God and never return to say thanks. Being grateful leads to a life of fulfillment. Gratitude comes when we see reality. All benefits come from a wonderful benefactor of which we are the grace-given beneficiaries. I would like us to be reminded that it is all by God's grace. It's all because our benefactor is good and faithful. And at times, adversity will make us directionally challenge and that it is God's intention for us to seek Him and look up to Him. Now let me give you words of wisdom from Edmund Burke. He's an Irish uh, statesman and philosopher. And he once said, Difficulty is a severe instructor set over us by one who knows us better than, than we know ourselves. And he loves us better too. Edmund Burke here was trying to say that if we believe in God, then we have to believe that he has all his blessings for us and that whatever he's doing in our lives will be for our best interest. He further on said, He that wrestles with us strengthens our nerves and sharpens our skill. Our antagonist is our helper. Isn't it at times we feel that God is against us? And we have to understand that God is never against, God, against us. As a matter of fact, He is for us. And the Word of God declares, if God is for us, then who can be against us? This conflict with difficulty makes us acquainted with our object and compels us to consider it in all its relations. It will not suffer us to be superficial. As a matter of fact, God wants us to deepen our faith, deepen our roots, and become mature in faith. In life, we all have our times of testing and growth. These trials are necessary. They are growth experiences. Though they are times of deep anguish and suffering, they are also times to draw near to God. So let us not presume that because the way is at times difficult and challenging, that our Heavenly Father is not mindful of us. He is rubbing, rubbing off our rough edges and sensitizing us for our great responsibilities ahead. Thirdly, being grateful arises from imperfections. So, or fourthly rather, um, uh, we have to understand that being grateful arises from imperfections. We are always in danger of being thankful only when good things come our way. When we do that, our threshold for gratitude gets higher and higher and higher and higher, and we become ungrateful people. Now, we were not easy to thank God. Now, uh, we, we, we have to uh, be so entitled and show it to God and dare God and show Him uh, our entitlement that we will never be ever satisfied unless God actually fulfilled things that we had demanded of. Now, the grateful life with God is the best opportunity ever offered to the human race. That's a great experiment God is running even now. He usually asks, How much will this man or this woman allow me to carry during an hour of suffering? That is one thing that we have to be challenged of. In the midst of our adversity, are we grateful enough to believe that God has His best interest for us? Let me give you 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10. And it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10 says, For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I I am strong. I am pretty sure that adversities and challenges are bringing out our weaknesses, are bringing out our imperfections. But I understand that God's purpose in our weaknesses or imperfections is to glorify the grace and power of His Son. God's design is to make you a showcase for Jesus' power. But not necessarily the way the market demands. 
not by getting rid of all our weaknesses, but by giving strength to endure and even rejoice in tribulation. So the ultimate purpose of God in our weakness is to glorify the kind of power that moved Christ to the cross and kept him there until the work of love was done. Now, we have to understand that Paul said that Christ crucified was foolishness to the Greeks, a stumbling block to the Jews, but to those who are called, and that's us, it is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So we always have to remind ourselves that the grace and power of God can make afflictions and adversities livable. As I end, let me give you a quote from, from Jerta Weisman Kevin. She was a Holocaust survivor. And she said, I had created a happy world, a happy world of make-believe around me during the long years of loneliness, a world of beauty and love. It had helped me to survive this lovely world that was to be mine when the war is over. Now, Jerta Weisman was, was among the thousands of prisoners held in one of Nazi uh, Germany's death camps during World War II. She tells of how she and her fellow prisoners were forced to stand in line for hours on end, on the verge of collapsing from starvation and fatigue. On one particular day, they noticed that in the one quarter of their, of their gray, dull, lifeless prison, a small flower had managed to break through the concrete. She said that the thousands of women in that camp took the greatest care of that little flower. It was the only spot of beauty in their ugly and deadly world, and they were thankful for it. Though life at, may, may at times be filled with nothing but darkness, depression, death, and decay, there is inevitably a bloom of something for which to be thankful. So my friends, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to understand that in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this darkness, God's beauty shall spring forth. So let me give you 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 as I end. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So adversity brings along with us opportunities that we should embrace with gratitude. So let me give you the four opportunities in the midst of adversity. Number one is the opportunity for growth. And the resolution that in the midst of adversity, I will grow. Secondly, is the opportunity for resilience. And also the declaration that, that in the midst of adversity, I will bounce back. We will never be stopped and we will never be hindered. And thirdly, is the opportunity to stand for our integrity. That in the midst of our adversities, that we can stay faithful on who we really am, we really are. And fourthly, in taking hold of the opportunity to be grateful, we are making this resolution that in the midst of adversity, I will always choose to be grateful. My dear friends, there's only one powerful, one powerful way to make adversity pay. That in the midst of our adversity, we will never complain, but we will be thankful. So my friends, always understand that beyond pandemic, there will be another challenge, another adversity, but we can always choose to be grateful.